The first time I realized my father hated me, I was seven years old. My name is Rachel Merrick, and I've spent most of my life trying to earn the love of a man who sees me as nothing but a burden. Rachel, get down here and set the table. Dad's voice boomed from the kitchen, making me flinch. I scrambled down the stairs, nearly tripping over my own feet in my haste to obey. As I entered the kitchen, the aroma of mom's pot roast filled the air. Dad stood by the counter, his face twisted in a scowl. Can't you move any faster? Your mother's been slaving away all day, and you can't even be bothered to help. I grabbed the plates from the cabinet, my small hands trembling. I'm sorry, Dad. I was just Dash. I don't want to hear your excuses, he snapped, cutting me off. Just do as you're told. Mom glanced over her shoulder, her eyes distant. Jasper, please. She's trying her best. Dad's jaw clenched. Her best isn't good enough. It never has been. I felt my chest tighten as I carefully laid out the plates, desperate to avoid making any noise that might set him off again. As I reached for the silverware drawer, I heard the front door open. We're home. Aunt Margot's cheerful voice rang out, followed by the pitter-patter of little feet. My three-year-old sister, Isla, burst into the kitchen, her curls bouncing. Daddy, she squealed, running straight into his arms. Dad's entire demeanor changed in an instant. His scowl melted into a warm smile as he scooped Isla up. There's my little princess. Did you have fun with Aunt Margot? I watched, a familiar ache settling in my chest as Dad showered Isla with affection. It was always like this. Isla was the golden child, the one who could do no wrong. And I was, well, I was the mistake. Aunt Margot entered the kitchen, her kind eyes finding mine. Hello, Rachel. How are you, sweetheart? Before I could answer, Dad cut in. She's fine. Rachel, finish setting the table. Aunt Margot frowned, but said nothing. She knew better than to challenge Dad when he was in one of his moods. As we sat down to eat, the conversation revolved entirely around Isla, her day at the park, her new words, her latest accomplishments. I pushed my food around my plate, feeling invisible. Rachel, Mom's voice startled me. Why aren't you eating? I made this especially for your father. I forced a smile. It's delicious, Mom. I'm just not very hungry. Dad's eyes narrowed. You're ungrateful. That's what you are. Do you know how many kids would kill for a meal like this? I'm sorry, I whispered, fighting back tears. May I be excused? No, Dad said firmly. You'll sit here and finish your dinner like a good girl. And then you'll do the dishes. Aunt Margot cleared her throat. Jasper, don't you think Dash? This doesn't concern you, Margot, Dad snapped. She's my daughter, and I'll raise her as I see fit. The rest of the meal passed in tense silence. As soon as it was over, I hurried to clear the table, desperate to escape to my room. As I stood at the sink, up to my elbows in soapy water, I heard Dad's voice from the living room. I swear, that girl is the bane of my existence. If it wasn't for her, we could have had the life we always dreamed of. Jasper, please. Mom's voice was barely audible. She might hear you. Let her hear, Dad replied bitterly. Maybe then she'll understand what a disappointment she is. I bit my lip hard, trying to hold back the sobs that threatened to escape. This was my life, always trying, always failing, never good enough. As I finished the dishes, I made a silent vow to myself. One day, I would prove them all wrong. One day, I would make something of myself with or without their approval. Little did I know, that day would come sooner than I ever imagined, and it would change everything. The sizzle of garlic hitting hot oil filled the air as I expertly flipped the pan, tossing the ingredients with a practiced flick of my wrist. The bustling kitchen of Chicago's premier culinary institute hummed with energy, a stark contrast to the stifling atmosphere of my childhood home. Rachel, your technique is impeccable, Chef Marceau praised, peering over my shoulder. That reduction is coming along beautifully. I beamed, savoring the warmth of his approval. Thank you, chef. As I plated my dish, my best friend Eli sidled up next to me. Killing it as usual, Ratch. You're gonna blow everyone away at the showcase next week. 
I grinned, feeling a surge of confidence. Thanks, Eli. I just hope Dash. My phone buzzed, interrupting my thought. I glanced at the screen, and my smile faltered. It was a text from Mom. Your father wants to know when you're coming home. Isla misses you. I sighed, tucking the phone away. Eli raised an eyebrow. Everything okay? Yeah, just family stuff, I muttered, focusing on garnishing my plate. After class, Eli and I grabbed coffee at our favorite campus spot. As we settled into a cozy corner booth, he fixed me with a concerned look. Spill it, rock. What's going on with your folks? I took a deep breath, tracing the rim of my mug. They want me to come home. Dad's probably hoping I'll give up on this chef nonsense and get a real job like he's always wanted. Eli's eyes narrowed. Don't tell me you're considering it. No way, I said firmly. This is my dream, Eli. I'm not giving it up for anyone. He nodded approvingly. Good. Because you're too damn talented to waste it on their small-minded expectations. Just then, my phone rang. It was Aunt Margot. I answered, grateful for the distraction. Hey, Aunt Margot. Rachel, darling. How's my favorite culinary prodigy? I couldn't help but smile at her enthusiasm. I'm good, Aunt Margot. Just finished another day of classes. Wonderful. Listen, I've got some exciting news. I've been talking to an old friend who owns a restaurant in the city. He's looking for some fresh talent for a summer internship. I may have mentioned your name. My heart raced. Are you serious? Aunt Margot, that's incredible. You deserve it, sweetheart. You've worked so hard. I'm sending you the details now. Oh, and one more thing. I heard the rustle of paper, then Aunt Margot's voice softened. I know things haven't been easy with your parents. I want you to have this. Consider it a little boost to help you chase your dreams. My phone pinged with a notification. I checked it and gasped. Aunt Margot had sent me a generous financial gift. Aunt Margot, I... I don't know what to say. I stammered, tears pricking my eyes. You don't have to say anything, dear. Just promise me you'll keep following your passion. You have a gift, Rachel. Don't let anyone dim your light. After we hung up, I sat in stunned silence. Eli leaned forward, concern etched on his face. Ratch, what is it? I showed him the notification, still in disbelief. Aunt Margot. She believes in me, Eli. She really believes in me. Eli grinned, squeezing my hand. Of course she does. We all do. It's about time you started believing in yourself, too. As we left the coffee shop, a new sense of determination filled me. I had support, I had talent, and now I had the means to take the next step towards my dreams. That night, as I pored over the internship details, my phone buzzed again. Another text from mom. Your father's asking about your plans after graduation. He says it's time to be practical. I stared at the message, a familiar mix of frustration and defiance rising within me. Then, with a deep breath, I typed out a reply. Tell dad I am being practical. I'm pursuing a career I'm passionate about and skilled in. I'm staying in Chicago this summer for an internship. This is my path, and I'm following it. I hit send before I could second-guess myself. Then, turning back to my culinary textbooks, I threw myself into planning for the showcase. I had a point to prove, not just to my family, but to myself. For the first time in my life, I felt truly free. And I was hungry for more. The familiar scent of home hit me as I stepped through the front door, a bittersweet mixture of nostalgia and dread. I'd barely set my bags down when mom's voice called out from the kitchen. Rachel, is that you? Come help me with dinner. I sighed, stealing myself. Coming, mom. The kitchen was a flurry of activity. Mom stood at the stove, stirring a pot of what looked like her infamous bland stew. Dad sat at the table, newspaper in hand, not bothering to look up as I entered. About time you got here, he grumbled. Your mother's been slaving away all day. I bit back a retort, instead moving to the counter to start chopping vegetables. How can I help, Mom? She glanced at me, her eyes distant. Just do what you can. You know how to cook now, don't you? I nodded, trying not to let the hurt show on my face. Four years of culinary school, and this was all the acknowledgement I got. As I worked, 
I couldn't help but notice how outdated the kitchen equipment was. The knives were dull, the pots and pans worn. I thought of the state-of-the-art kitchens I'd trained in and felt a pang of longing. So, Dad's voice cut through my thoughts. What are your plans now that you've finished with that cooking hobby of yours? I tensed, focusing on the carrots I was dicing. It's not a hobby, Dad. I'm a trained chef. I'm planning to work in restaurants. Maybe open my own someday. He scoffed. A restaurant? That's no way to make a living. You need a real job, something stable. Before I could respond, the front door burst open. I'm home. Isla's voice rang out, followed by the sound of her bounding up the stairs. Dad's face lit up. There's my girl. How was your day, princess? I watched as he showered Isla with attention, asking about her day, her friends, her plans. The contrast to his interaction with me was stark and painful. As we sat down to eat, the conversation revolved entirely around Isla's achievements and aspirations. I pushed the bland stew around my plate, my culinary instincts screaming at the lack of seasoning and depth. Rachel, mom's voice startled me. Why aren't you eating? Don't you like it? I forced a smile. It's fine, mom. I'm just not very hungry. Dad's eyes narrowed. After all the effort your mother put in, you're still as ungrateful as ever, I see. I felt my temper flare. I didn't say that. I just dash. That's enough, he cut me off. If you're so good at cooking now, why don't you make dinner tomorrow? Show us what you've learned with all that money we wasted on your education. I nodded stiffly, already planning the menu in my head. I'd show them exactly what I could do. The next evening, I threw myself into preparing a gourmet meal. I used every technique I'd learned, every trick to elevate flavors and presentation. The kitchen came alive with aromas that had never graced this house before. As I set the table, arranging each plate with care, I felt a flicker of hope. Maybe this would be the moment they finally saw my worth. But as we sat down to eat, the reactions were underwhelming. Mom picked at her food, muttering about fancy restaurant nonsense. Dad took a few bites, then pushed his plate away. It's interesting, he said, his tone dismissive. But give me a good home-cooked meal any day. This just isn't practical, Rachel. I felt my heart sink. No matter what I did, it would never be enough. Later that night, as I was cleaning up, I heard a soft knock. My grandfather, Gideon, stepped into the kitchen, his eyes twinkling. That was quite a meal, Rachel, he said warmly. You've got a real talent. I felt tears prick my eyes at his kindness. Thanks, Grandpa. At least someone appreciates it. He nodded, understanding in his gaze. Then, reaching into his pocket, he pulled out an old, leather-bound book. I want you to have this. It's been in our family for generations. As I took the book, its pages yellowed with age. I realized it was filled with handwritten recipes. Gideon squeezed my shoulder. Don't let them dim your light, Rachel. You've got a gift. Use it. In that moment, holding my family's culinary legacy in my hands, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I might not have my parents' approval, but I had something far more valuable, a passion, a talent, and now, a connection to my roots. I was more determined than ever to forge my own path, no matter the obstacles. The Merrick family gathering was in full swing, the living room buzzing with conversation and laughter. I stood in the corner, nursing a glass of wine, feeling like an outsider in my own family. Aunt Margot caught my eye from across the room and offered a sympathetic smile. Rachel, dear. Grandpa Gideon's voice cut through the noise. Come here a moment, would you? I made my way through the crowd, grateful for the excuse to escape another of Dad's pointed comments about real jobs. Grandpa Gideon sat in his favorite armchair, eyes twinkling with mischief. I've got something for you, he said, pulling out a small envelope. Just a bit of fun. Inside was a scratch-off lottery ticket. I laughed, touched by the simple gesture. Thanks, Grandpa. Well, go on then, he urged. Let's see if Lady Luck is on your side today. With a playful roll of my eyes, I began scratching. As the numbers were revealed, my heart started racing. I double-checked, then triple-checked, hardly daring to believe it. Grandpa, I whispered, my voice shaking. I, 
I think I won. His eyes widened. Won what, dear? The jackpot. Five hundred thousand dollars. The room fell silent as the news spread. Then, chaos erupted. Five hundred thousand? Dad's voice boomed. Well, isn't that something? That'll set us all up nicely. I felt a chill run down my spine. What do you mean, us all? Mom chimed in, her tone sickly sweet. Well, surely you'll share with your family, Rachel. After all we've done for you. I clutched the ticket tighter, anger and disbelief warring inside me. After all you've done for me? You mean like constantly belittling my dreams? Making me feel worthless? Dad's face darkened. Now listen here, young lady. We put a roof over your head, food on your plate. The least you can do is show some gratitude. Gratitude? I laughed bitterly. For what? For making me feel like a burden my entire life. Isla piped up, her voice small. Dad, maybe Rachel should dash. Stay out of this, Isla, Dad snapped. This is between us and your sister. I looked around the room, at the faces of my family. Some looked embarrassed, others expectant. Only Aunt Margot and Grandpa Gideon seemed to be on my side. This is my ticket, I said, my voice growing stronger. My win. And I'm not sharing it. The room erupted again, voices overlapping in a cacophony of outrage and entitlement. You selfish little Dash. After all we've sacrificed, Dash. I can't believe you'd do this to your own family, Dash. Aunt Margot stepped forward, placing a protective hand on my shoulder. That's enough. This is Rachel's win, and it's her decision what to do with it. Dad turned on her, his face red with anger. Stay out of this, Margot. You've always coddled her, filled her head with ridiculous notions. The only ridiculous notion here, Grandpa Gideon's calm voice cut through the chaos, is the idea that Rachel owes you anything. The room fell silent once more. Grandpa rarely raised his voice, and when he did, everyone listened. This is Rachel's chance, he continued, her opportunity to pursue her dreams. And if you can't support that, then maybe you need to take a long, hard look at yourselves. I felt tears prick my eyes, overwhelmed by his support. In that moment, I made a decision that would change everything. I'm leaving, I announced. I'm going to use this money to start my own restaurant, to build the life I've always dreamed of. Mom gasped. Rachel, you can't be serious. I've never been more serious about anything in my life. As I turned to leave, Isla caught my arm. Rachel, wait. I... I'm proud of you. I smiled at her, seeing a glimmer of understanding in her eyes. Thanks, Isla. That means a lot. With one last look at my stunned family, I walked out the door, the lottery ticket clutched tightly in my hand. It wasn't just money I was holding, it was freedom, opportunity, and the chance to finally prove myself. As I stepped into the cool night air, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. For the first time in my life, I was truly in control of my destiny, and I was ready to savor every moment of it. The key clicked in the lock of my new apartment, and I stepped inside, breathing in the scent of possibility. Boxes lined the walls, each one filled with dreams I'd been too afraid to unpack until now. I set down the last of my belongings and surveyed my new kingdom, small, but mine. My phone buzzed. Another message from Dad. You're making a mistake. Come home before it's too late. I deleted it without responding. There was no going back now. A knock at the door startled me. I opened it to find Eli grinning, a bottle of champagne in hand. Housewarming gift for the future restaurateur. I laughed, ushering him in. You're ridiculous. I haven't even started looking for locations yet. Details, details, he waved dismissively. We're celebrating your freedom tonight. As we sipped champagne from mismatched mugs, I shared my plans. I'm thinking of a fusion concept, something that blends traditional recipes with modern techniques. Eli nodded enthusiastically. That's perfect. It's you on a plate, honoring your roots while forging your own path. A warmth spread through me, and not just from the champagne. This was what support felt like. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity. I scoured the city for the perfect location, met with real estate agents, and drafted business plans. 
Each step forward was exhilarating, but the constant barrage of doubt-filled messages from my parents cast a shadow over my excitement. One afternoon, as I was poring over potential menu items, my phone rang. It was Aunt Margot. Rachel, darling, how's the restaurant planning coming along? I sighed, grateful for her unwavering support. It's challenging, but exciting. I think I've found the perfect location. That's wonderful. Listen, I've been thinking. I have some connections in the restaurant industry. How about I set up a meeting with a few potential investors? My heart raced. Aunt Margot, that would be incredible. Thank you. Don't thank me yet, she chuckled. These investors can be sharks. But I believe in you, Rachel. You've got what it takes to impress them. After we hung up, I turned back to Grandpa Gideon's recipe book, seeking comfort in its worn pages. As I flipped through, a folded piece of paper fluttered to the floor. Curious, I opened it. My dearest Rachel, if you're reading this, it means you've finally taken the leap to follow your dreams. I always knew you had it in you. There's so much of your grandmother in you, her passion, her talent, her unwavering spirit. There's something you should know. Years ago, your grandmother and I owned a restaurant. It was our pride and joy, built from nothing but love and determination. We poured our hearts into every dish, every customer interaction. It was more than a business. It was our legacy, but we lost it. The details aren't important now, but know this. Dreams can be fragile things. Protect yours fiercely. Don't let anyone, not even family, steal your passion. You have a gift, Rachel. Use it. Create something beautiful. And remember, true family supports your dreams, not diminishes them. I'm so proud of you. Love. Grandpa Gideon. Tears blurred my vision as I read and reread the note. A family secret hidden all these years. Questions swirled in my mind. What happened to their restaurant? Why had no one ever mentioned it? With trembling hands, I picked up my phone and dialed Grandpa Gideon's number. It went to voicemail. Grandpa, I said, my voice thick with emotion. I found your note. I, I have so many questions. Please call me back when you can. As I hung up, a new determination filled me. I wasn't just building a restaurant anymore. I was reclaiming a legacy, honoring the dreams that had been lost. I turned back to my plans with renewed vigor. The menu began to take shape, a blend of Grandpa Gideon's traditional recipes and my own modern twists. Each dish would tell a story, our family story. As night fell, I stood at my window, looking out at the city lights. Somewhere out there was the perfect location for my restaurant. Somewhere out there were the answers to the questions burning in my mind. Tomorrow, I'd start searching for both. But tonight, I allowed myself to dream, fueled by the knowledge that I wasn't just following my own passion, I was carrying forward a family legacy. And nothing, not even my parents' disapproval, could stop me now. The rhythmic pounding of hammers and whir of power tools filled the air as I stood in the center of what would soon be my restaurant. Dust motes danced in the sunlight streaming through the newly installed windows, and for a moment, I allowed myself to bask in the progress. M.S. Merrick? A voice pulled me from my reverie. We've uncovered something you might want to see. I followed the contractor to a back corner where they'd been removing old drywall. There, revealed like a time capsule, was a faded sign. Gideon's place zest. 1975. My breath caught in my throat. Grandpa Gideon's restaurant had been here, in this very spot. It couldn't be a coincidence. That night, I pored over his recipe book with new intensity, searching for clues. As I flipped through the well-worn pages, a yellowed newspaper clipping fell out. The headline made my blood run cold. Local restaurant closes amid family dispute. The article detailed how Gideon's Place, once a beloved neighborhood institution, had shuttered its doors after a bitter disagreement between the owner and his son-in-law. The son-in-law wasn't named, but I knew in my gut it was my father. With shaking hands, I dialed Grandpa Gideon's number. This time, he answered. Rachel, my dear, I've been expecting your call. Grandpa, I said, my voice thick with emotion. The restaurant, it was here, in the same building. Did you know? He sighed heavily. 
I had my suspicions when you told me the address. It seems fate has a sense of irony. What happened, Grandpa? The article mentioned a dispute with Dad, but dash. It's a long and painful story, Rachel. One I've tried to forget for many years. But perhaps it's time you knew the truth. Over the next hour, Grandpa Gideon unraveled a tale that shook me to my core. He spoke of the restaurant's early success, of the love and passion he and my grandmother had poured into every dish. And then he told me about my father's involvement. Jasper was ambitious, always looking for the next big thing. He convinced us to take out loans, to expand too quickly. When things went south, he, he made some questionable decisions. Cooked the books, so to speak. I felt sick. Dad embezzled money. He thought he could fix it before anyone noticed. But by the time it all came to light, the damage was done. We lost everything. The restaurant, our savings, nearly our home. Tears streamed down my face as the pieces fell into place. Dad's bitterness, his resentment towards me and my culinary dreams, it all stemmed from his own failures and guilt. Why didn't you ever tell me? I whispered. We wanted to protect you, Rachel. And Jasper. Well, he made it clear he never wanted it mentioned again. I think the shame ate away at him over the years. As we said our goodbyes, a steely resolve settled over me. I wasn't just opening a restaurant anymore. I was reclaiming a legacy, righting a wrong that had festered for decades. The next morning, I arrived at the construction site with renewed purpose. I gathered my team, sharing my vision with a passion that surprised even me. We're not just creating a restaurant, I told them. We're resurrecting a piece of history. Every dish will tell a story, every recipe a tribute to those who came before us. As we worked, I incorporated elements of Gideon's place into the design, subtle nods to the past that most wouldn't notice, but that filled me with a sense of connection to my roots. The menu began to take shape, a perfect blend of Grandpa Gideon's classic recipes and my own modern twists. Each dish was a conversation between past and present, tradition and innovation. But as opening day approached, a nagging worry gnawed at me. How would my parents react when they realized what I'd done? Would they see it as an act of defiance, a public airing of family secrets? I pushed the thoughts aside, focusing on the tasks at hand. There would be time for confrontations later. For now, I had a restaurant to open, a legacy to honor. As I stood in the nearly finished dining room, surrounded by the ghosts of the past and the promise of the future, I made a silent vow. I would make this place a success, not just for myself, but for Grandpa Gideon, for the dreams that had been stolen from him. And if my parents couldn't accept that, well, they'd have to learn to live with disappointment for a change. The soft glow of candlelight danced across the polished surfaces of Legacy, my restaurant, on its opening night. The air hummed with excitement and the tantalizing aroma of Grandpa Gideon's recipes, reimagined with my own modern twists. I stood in the kitchen, heart racing, as I watched my dream unfold before my eyes. Eli appeared at my side, grinning. Rachel, it's packed out there. You've done it. I allowed myself a moment of pride before refocusing on the task at hand. Thanks, Eli. Let's make sure every dish is perfect. As I moved to check on a simmering sauce, Aunt Margot burst into the kitchen, her face pale. Rachel, honey, you need to come out front. Your parents are here. My stomach dropped. I'd sent them an invitation out of obligation, never expecting them to actually show up. Taking a deep breath, I steeled myself and headed for the dining room. There they stood, looking out of place amidst the celebratory atmosphere. Dad's face was set in its usual scowl, while Mom fidgeted nervously with her purse strap. Rachel, Dad's voice was gruff. We need to talk. In private. I led them to a small office off the main floor, my mind racing. As soon as the door closed behind us, Dad rounded on me. What do you think you're playing at, he hissed. Using your grandfather's recipes? Naming dishes after him? You have no right. I felt a surge of anger. No right? This is my heritage, Dad. My legacy. Legacy, he scoffed. You don't know the first thing about legacy. We sacrificed everything for you girls, and this is how you repay us. Mom chimed in, her voice sickly sweet. 
Darling, we're just concerned. Running a restaurant is so risky. Wouldn't it be better to share some of your windfall with the family? We could all benefit. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Benefit? Like how you benefited from Grandpa Gideon's restaurant before you ran it into the ground. The color drained from Dad's face. What are you talking about? I know everything, Dad. About Gideon's place, about the embezzlement, about how you destroyed Grandpa's dream. You ungrateful little dash, Dad's hand raised, and for a moment, I thought he might strike me. But then a voice cut through the tension. Don't you dare touch her. We all turned to see Isla standing in the doorway, her eyes blazing with a fire I'd never seen before. Isla, honey, Mom started, but Isla cut her off. No, Mom. I've listened to you two tear Rachel down for years. I've watched you favor me, push her aside, make her feel worthless. And for what? To cover up your own failures and guilt. Dad's face contorted with rage. You have no idea what you're talking about, young lady. Don't I? Isla shot back. I've always known something was off. The way you flinched whenever restaurants were mentioned, the bitter comments about failed dreams. It all makes sense now. I stared at my sister in awe, seeing her in a new light. All this time, I thought she was oblivious to our parents' manipulation, when in reality, she'd been suffering too. This ends now, I said, finding strength in Isla's support. You two have no claim on this restaurant or its profits. This is my dream, my hard work, and my redemption of our family's legacy. You can't do this, Dad sputtered. We're parents. We deserve Dash. You deserve nothing. I interrupted, my voice steady. If you can't be happy for me, if you can't support my dreams, then you have no place here. Not in my restaurant and not in my life. A heavy silence fell over the room. Mom's eyes darted between Dad and me, uncertain. Dad's face was a storm of emotions, anger, shame, and something that might have been regret. Finally, Isla spoke again. Rachel's right. It's time for us to go, Mom and Dad. This is her night, her triumph. We should never have come here to ruin it. As Isla ushered our shell-shocked parents out, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. I'd confronted the ghosts of my past and come out stronger. Returning to the bustling dining room, I was greeted by the sight of happy customers, the sound of laughter, and the rich aromas of my culinary creations. This was my world now, my family. And as I dove back into the rhythm of the kitchen, I knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, I was ready to face them. On my own terms, with my own strength, and with the true support of those who believed in me. The aroma of sizzling garlic and fresh herbs filled the air as I moved through the bustling kitchen of Legacy. Six months had passed since our tumultuous opening night, and the restaurant had blossomed beyond my wildest dreams. Rachel. Isla's voice called out over the clatter of pots and pans. The food critic from the Tribune just arrived. I nodded, taking a deep breath to calm my nerves. This review could cement our reputation as one of Chicago's top dining destinations. As I put the finishing touches on the critic's first course, my eyes fell on the framed photo hanging in the corner of the kitchen. It was a picture of Grandpa Gideon in front of his original restaurant, his eyes twinkling with pride. Next to it hung the handwritten recipe book he'd given me, now a cherished relic of our family's culinary legacy. You've got this, Ratch, Eli said, squeezing my shoulder as he passed. Your food speaks for itself. I smiled gratefully at my friend, now my sous chef. Thanks, Eli. Let's show them what legacy is all about. As the evening progressed, I lost myself in the rhythm of the kitchen, the dance of flavors and textures that had become my life's passion. Each dish that left the pass was a piece of my heart, a fragment of my family's story reimagined. Hours later, as the last customers trickled out, Isla burst into the kitchen, her face flushed with excitement. Rachel, you're not going to believe this. The critic, he loved it. He's calling Legacy a triumphant blend of nostalgia and innovation. We did it. The kitchen erupted in cheers. As I hugged my sister, tears of joy streaming down my face, I caught sight of a familiar figure standing in the doorway. Grandpa. I gasped. Grandpa Gideon stepped forward, 
his eyes misty. I couldn't stay away any longer. I had to see for myself what you've accomplished. As he looked around the kitchen, taking in the modern equipment alongside the old family photos and recipes, his face broke into a wide smile. You've done it, Rachel. You've reclaimed our legacy and made it your own. We spent the next hour showing Grandpa around, introducing him to the staff, and sharing stories of the past few months. As we sat in a quiet corner of the empty dining room, Grandpa reached into his pocket and pulled out an envelope. I have something for you, he said, his voice thick with emotion. It's a letter from your father. My heart clenched. I hadn't spoken to my parents since opening night. With trembling hands, I opened the letter and began to read. Rachel, I've spent months trying to find the words to express how deeply I regret my actions, both recent and long past. The truth is, I've been a coward. I allowed my own failures and guilt to poison our relationship, to blind me to the incredible person you've become. Seeing the success you've made of Legacy, hearing about how you've honored your grandfather's memory while forging your own path, it's made me realize how wrong I've been. You are everything I wish I had been brave enough to be. I know I have no right to ask for your forgiveness, but I hope that someday you might allow me the chance to try to make amends, to be the father you always deserved, with love and deepest regret. Dad. As I finished reading, I looked up to see Isla and Grandpa watching me with concern. Are you okay? Isla asked softly. I took a deep breath, surprised by the sense of peace that washed over me. I am. For the first time in a long time, I really am. In that moment, surrounded by the warmth of my restaurant and the love of my true family, not just those related by blood, but the family I'd chosen and built, I realized that I had finally found my place in the world. Legacy wasn't just a restaurant. It was a testament to the power of perseverance, of honoring the past while embracing the future. It was the culmination of a journey that had taught me the true meaning of family, of self-worth, and of following one's dreams against all odds. As we raised our glasses in a quiet toast, I knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, I was ready to face them. I had reclaimed my family's legacy, forged my own path, and in doing so, had finally found the acceptance and love I'd always craved, not from others, but from within myself. The future stretched out before me, as rich and full of possibility as the dishes we created each night. And I couldn't wait to see what the next chapter would bring.